Well, once again, I do welcome you all uh, as we begin this uh, 24th Eucharistic Convention. Special welcome to visitors to Auckland and to those who will be um, speaking to us over these days. So for 24 years, the convention has been gathering and um, life goes on and every year is a little bit different. And the, um, I wanted to comment tonight, a lot of you will know that um, Pope Francis has called a Synod of Bishops, a meeting of the Synod of Bishops for October next year. And the focus for the Synod next year is young people, the faith and vocation discernment. Young people, the faith and vocation discernment. And Teresa McNamara, who is the um, coordinator of our youth ministry in the diocese, was one of two representatives from New Zealand who were in Rome uh, just before Easter. Two young people from over a hundred countries gathered to meet with Pope Francis just to um, hear his thoughts and his hopes for this synod. And Teresa returned home uh, earlier this week and was just buzzing and had a meeting uh, with me and with some others to talk about um, what Pope Francis has in mind for the Synod. The first thing, he, the point he made to the young people, he said, I'm not just talking about Catholic young people, I'm talking about all young people, Catholics, Protestants, Hindus, Muslims, whatever. He said, all young people, he said, I want the Synod to um, look at, at them. But, he, but Teresa was interesting too, because Pope Francis said, it's not just about young people, you know. And he said to the youth representatives, <coughs> and he will say to the young people um, who are discussing the, the, the issue of the synod, he said, I want you to talk to the old. He said, I want you to go and talk to your grandparents. And he said, I want you to go and ask them, what were your dreams when you were our age? What was your dream? What were your dreams? And he said to the young people, you've got to listen to your grandparents. Listen to older friends. And then ask the older people, well, what are your dreams now? But um, Teresa said she thought that was really interesting. The issue is young people, but Pope Francis is saying to the young people to talk to the old as well. And with vocation discernment, it's not about a vocation in the church. It's the vocation that every individual has from God. How do I discern what is my role in my life? How do I find what God wants of me? And Pope Francis said that we've got to have a dialogue with God. You know the, the theme for the convention this year, his face is on you. That's almost exactly what Pope Francis said to the young people. He said, his face is on you right now. He said, don't worry about the past, the past is past. Don't worry about the future, it's not here. It's right now. Um, Jesus' face is on you. And he said, he challenged the young, he said, what are the needs in our society and what is God calling you to do? And he, he, he repeated the little phrase he said from time to time. He says, God doesn't want couch potatoes. No point just lying back on a settee thinking, I wonder what God wants. He said, we've got to develop this relationship with God and then get cracking. And that was what Jesus in the Gospel, the Easter Gospel that we, we just heard read, Peter and Thomas and James and John and uh, Nathaniel, they're all out fishing and then they realise, the beloved disciple says, that's the Lord on the beach there. Well imagine how they were feeling. They'd all done a runner after the Garden of Gethsemane. They were nowhere to be seen. They were the ones who'd said to Jesus, we'll be with you, we'll look after you, we'll, you know, trust us. They'd all gone, especially poor old Peter. 
And yet Jesus is there making breakfast for them. They're too scared to ask, who, who are you? But Jesus doesn't say, hey, we've got a few things to discuss. What happened a few days ago? His face is on you now. Forget the past. Now. That's the challenge that's being addressed to us here in New Zealand in a very secular society. We in New Zealand are becoming very familiar with earthquakes, aren't we, after Christchurch and Kaikoura, and often on TV you'll be told what to do in the case of an earthquake, you know. Rattle, rattle, rattle. If you can't stand up for over a minute, it goes on for over a minute, and you can't stand up. As soon as it stops, start moving to higher ground. Like we're being, we're being sort of told, you know, like this is earthquake territory and this is what you do. Now, the church in places like New Zealand has been undergoing something like an earthquake. The, um, I have a priest from Auckland Diocese who works in the Netherlands, Father Marcel Smits, and he was out here recently and he was telling me that he works in the city of Utrecht two priests, two permanent deacons and two pastoral workers care for a cluster of parishes. I thought, well, that's fair enough. Two priests, two deacons, two pastoral workers. But what he said next really stunned me. He said, we work in a cluster of parishes that 30 years ago, that's 1987, 30 years ago was being cared for by 41 priests. Isn't that amazing? That's earthquake material. You think, what's going on? What's happened? And some people say that what we're experiencing, it's a difficult and a challenging time, but it's the breakup of the Christendom model of the church. Christendom is the situation that exists when the culture and the gospel are hand in hand. And we, New Zealand, used to be that sort of a society, a, a Christian society. Medieval Europe was very much, that was Christendom. The culture and the gospel were closely linked together. And I was interested to read that in, in medieval Europe, they, they didn't have catechism classes for children because children learnt the faith by living in the culture. When um, St. Thomas More was alive in England, over the course of the year, they had 53 Holy Day holidays each year. So the whole culture was teaching the gospel. It was sort of all linked together. You know, you'd go from Holy Thursday to Good Friday to Holy Saturday to Ascension Day to Assumption Day, uh, Annunciation Day, the Feast of St. Joseph, the Feast of Our Patrons, that, that in the course of the year, just go from one um, holy day to another. And so little children growing up in that culture, Christendom, they, uh, they would just absorb the faith the way a little Filipino child learns to be a Filipino, or a little Tongan child learns to be a Tongan, or a little Pākehā child learns to be a Pākehā. It's part of the culture, you just grow up in it. Now those days are finished in our culture in New Zealand and in much of the Western world. And Pope John Paul II and Pope Benedict and now Pope Francis, they are calling for a new evangelization. They say it's a different game. Game, game, game rules have changed. It's a whole different scene. And the popes are saying that we need to have a new, a new creativity, a new dynamism, new methods. It calls for real openness and um, letting the Holy Spirit work through us. It's not the end of the world, but it's different and it's challenging. And we need to be um, people of faith. Now I mentioned Teresa McNamara, our youth um, coordinator, she also went to a conference in the United States at the end of last year. And when she came back, she said it's really interesting talking about youth ministry today. She said that one of the lessons that they were emphasizing is that you need to work with the whole family, not just with young people on their own. 
and she said that what young people need most of all is a sense of belonging like belonging to a family and she said that what they found a lot of research they're doing is that every young person needs at least five significant adults in their lives who are faithful Catholics and who know the young person you know say hi I, hi Sarah how are things going or hello Mike you know what's happening at school you don't have to be with them every day but they know that you know their name and they know that you are a committed faithful faith-filled Catholic and they know that you know their name and Teresa said she thinks it's terribly important that um, youth ministry it's not just young people that older people too are so important and that is the point that Pope Francis was making to these people in Rome just before Easter the, the young people they're preparing for the Synod he said to them go home and speak to your grandparents ask them what were their dreams when they were young and so as we go into the Eucharistic Convention over the next 12 months we're going to hear a lot about the Synod young people the faith and vocation discernment and Teresa would say and Pope Francis is saying please don't think oh well, that's very good I'm, I hope the young people sort something out because Pope Francis is saying it's our concern it's a synod and it's a topic that involves each one of us so let's pray over these days of the Eucharistic Convention that our own faith will be strengthened and nourished so that in this um, vitally important work of sharing the faith passing it on from one generation to the next especially in our sort of a culture where this Christendom model is sort of cracking um, that we don't give up it's new methods new creativity new dynamism new energy new faithfulness let's pray that these days will be blessed and will empower us to live our faith more deeply and share it with confidence amen